Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. Why well, the topic of today uh, is the Boolean algebra versus the ordinary algebra or the difference between Boolean and ordinary algebra. Okay, just a theoretical topic, nothing complicated. Uh, okay, so other than the difference is the first point over here is about the associative law. I will write I will write B A for Boolean algebra in short. The associative law holds in the Boolean algebra, uh, whereas it is not mentioned in the Huntington postulates. Okay, this is the first point. The second point is about the distributive property of the OR operation over the AND operation is valid in the Boolean algebra but in the ordinary algebra in the ordinary algebra the addition over the multiplication is not valid same case over here or over n so this is a valid one and in Boolean algebra we have this property but in the normal algebra or the ordinary algebra the addition over multiplication distributive property this does not exist and this is not valid okay the third point the third point is that as we do not have any multiplicative inverse or any additive inverse in the boolean algebra we have identities we have additive identity we have the multiplicative identity but we do not have the inverses which means that we have no add, no subtraction and division in the Boolean algebra. No subtraction and division. This is where? This is in the Boolean algebra. Of course, in the ordinary algebra we have. Then the fourth, the fourth point is about the complement. We have the idea of complement only in Boolean algebra. We do not have any complement in the ordinary algebra. Then what would be the complement of 4? What would be the complement of 45? Nothing. We don't know. So no complement in the ordinary algebra. Whereas we have the complement in Boolean algebra. That is the complement of 0 is 1 and the complement of 1 is 0. So that is the fourth point. The fifth and the last point is what? That in the ordinary algebra, we, we deal with sets of infinite values. For example, the set of natural numbers is 1, 2, 3, and it goes on and on. And we don't know where it ends. So we have sets with infinite number of elements. Or, but in the ordinary, in the Boolean algebra, and especially talking of the two valued Boolean algebra, we have a set B with a defined number of values, that is these two values, 0 and 1. So these are the differences in the Boolean algebra and the ordinary algebra. Let me check. Yes, we have these five. Okay. Uh, so the differences are done. Next, we talk about the generalized De Morgan's theorem. Generalized De Morgan's theorem. Okay. So, as we've seen earlier, that if you have an AND operation and whole complemented, so you convert it into an OR operation and complement the literals. A literal is what? A literal is the any input, the one of them. This A 
for example, here is one literal, the B is another literal. So the generalized De Morgan's term in generalized form, we can write it as the number of literals does not matter. Any number of literals, you do what? You just interchange and and or operations. This is the first step. And the second step is what? You do complement the literals. Complement the literals. Now what does this mean? For example, the AND operation. We have A ended with B ended with C up to up to ended with F a whole complement. So this would be equal to what? You Interchange the AND and OR. So there is an AND. We get it in OR. A OR B OR C OR up to OR F. And the second step, complement the literal. So you complement each one of them. Okay? And the second form of this De Morgan's theorem is what? A OR with B OR with C. Let's say OR up to F. A whole complement. So this would be A complement times B complement and it would C complement up to up to and it with an F complement. So this is the generalized De Morgan's theorem. Another important theorem is the is the what? Is the absorption theorem that we would be using. So let me write it down for you. Okay, so the absorption theorem it has its two parts A and B. So first let me write the A. The A part is what? X plus X times Y is equal to X. This is the first part of this absorption theorem. You want to prove it? Let me prove it for you. So I can write that as x times 1 plus x times y left hand side. I'm proving the right from the left. Can I write this left hand side like this? Yes, I can. I take x common, x. So what is left? 1 plus y. From the properties in the OR operation we have studied, that anything odd with 1 is 1. So which makes this x and it with 1. And, and the uh, identity in the AND operation, we've studied that anything and it with 1 is again the same thing, which means x and it with 1 is x. And here we are. We've proved this. Okay. The second form. Of this is what? X times X plus Y is X. Now how does this happen? So look, the distributive property of multi of AND over R. So X times X plus X times Y. Is it fine? Anything added with itself is the same. X added with itself is X. X plus X times Y. This comes up to be here again. So taking x common, x times 1 plus y, 1 plus y is again 1, x times 1, and anything ended with 1 is again x, which has been proved again. So these are again the important theorem, absorption theorem, x plus xy is equal to x, and x into x plus y is also equal to x. If you want to prove it from the truth table, select, uh, I will do one of them for you. Let's say the first one. This is x, y, and what is x, y? Then the x, y, and then x plus x, y. Okay. So, the input, two inputs. So, 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 input combinations okay and what are they 0 0 0 1 
one zero and one one. All right. Now what is x into y? We see we've seen zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. One times zero is zero, and one times one is one. Now x plus x y. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is again zero. One plus zero is one, and one plus one is again one. So look, from the first and the fourth column, we have proved that x plus x y is equal to x. Okay, the first part has been proved. What do you say? Shall I prove the second one? Okay, let's prove the second one as well. So I will remove this. Yes, I will remove it. Okay. Now what do we have here? X and Y, X plus Y we have. And then we have X times X plus Y. All right. So X plus Y, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 1, and 1, 1 is 1. X times X plus Y, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 0. 1, 1 is 1, and 1, 1 is again 1. So if you see again the first and the fourth column, so x into x plus y is again equal to x, which means the second part has also been verified, has been proved mathematically over here, and has been verified by the truth table over here. All right? So I believe that's all for today's lecture. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next lecture. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.